your ego and try to think you know it all and think that you don't need Jesus. Come on, somebody. That you don't need to, to, to come and lift your hands because you already spirit-filled. You ain't spirit-filled. You're demon-filled. Come on, somebody. You got to get the flesh out the way and let the Spirit of God begin to move inside of your church. Why? Because Jesus Christ loves you. He loves you. Look at your neighbor and say, He loves you. He knows you're going to fail. He knows you're going to make mistakes. But He still loves you. And He wants you to recognize that. Sometimes we go through the things that we go through because He wants to break us. Because He wants to show us that there's no other way. There's no other name than the name of Jesus. There's no other There's no other route. There's no other detour in our walk with God. But give you, hallelujah, humble yourself. Let Him lead you. Let Him direct you. Somebody say, hallelujah. God has victory to Him in all times, in every season. Many have come and many have gotten started. Hello? But many are staying in the desert in the, in the way of the world. It's sad that we see people that are on fire for God, but it's just an emotional thing and it's not really a, a, a relationship that God has called us. I'm speaking something real to you tonight, church. The Bible says that Israel, was, there was a great multitude. Multitudes came. Multitudes were, were brought out. Somebody say amen. Before they entered into the promised land, there was many people that saw the miracles, saw the signs. We're not in the season that you need to see another miracle, another sign. It's, we're in the time and the season that you need to get a, a closer relationship with Him. And you need to get involved with God. You need to fall in love again. We need to fall in love with the King of Kings. The Bible says after all those multitudes came, the Israel only two entered into the promised land. We got to reach our promised land. Somebody say amen. Yes, you've been through some stuff. God is waiting for you to be broken so you can enter in. And it's time to enter in. And finally, when, when, we, when we permit God to do what He's going to do inside of us, hallelujah, He permits us to enter into the promised land. Hallelujah. It says only a few entered. It said it was Joshua. Somebody say amen. Joshua and Caleb only entered. Amen. The Bible says, the Word of God says this, church, listen to me. The kingdom of God suffers violence. The kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violent, the violent, they take it by force. Oh, in the name of Jesus, how many want to take it by force tonight? Come on. How many want to reach out to the promised land and say, that belongs to me. Devil, you're not going to rob from me no more. You're not going to steal from me no more. You're not going to take from my children. You're not going to take from my blessings. You're not going to take from what God has given me because God has given it to me. So get out of the way in the name of Jesus. The problem is, listen to me, church. The problem is we keep on trying to fight the battle ourselves. That's why God never permits us to enter. You know, in the call, the Bible says the first thing that he does in the call, the Bible says in the call, hallelujah, he calls you. After he calls you, he puts you through a test. Come on, somebody. Once you go through the test, hallelujah, then you're attacked on every side. I'm serious. You'll be attacked with mama and daddy. I turn out to if you're still going to trust me, if you're still going to lift holy hands to worship me. Somebody say amen. That's another message, but come on, somebody. How many want to reach the promised land? Come on, somebody. Not in my strength, Lord, but in your word, says the Lord. Don't, don't be so easily enticed. Don't be so easily discouraged in this season. Put a stop to the cycle. Put a stop to the enemy's track. Train your mind to have the word in there. Come on, somebody. Train your spirit to submit. Hallelujah. Flesh got to submit to the things of the spirit. And let the spirit of God preach. Before you can come to God, first you must feel his presence. After you feel his presence, the spirit of God... We're running to him in an emotion. We're running to him, hallelujah, because I'm going through this. I think, and most of us come in the presence of God and they come down to the altar and they begin to pray what they think they ought to pray and you're in the flesh. Somebody. Come on, somebody. I'm telling you the truth tonight. 
we cannot come to God in the flesh. We must come to God in the presence and permit the presence of God to do its work in the spirit of God. Will quicken you, touch your heart. And then the Bible says that you begin to pray in the spirit. Oh, somebody say the promised land is waiting for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to take the enemy face to face. We got we to gotta face our fears of everything that you do not want to face. You got to face him head on. Why? Because he uses the same thing every year to distract the plans of God for you. He wants to destroy you. He doesn't want to bless you. The devil make you think that you're blessed, but you ain't blessed. And you get coming up here into the church and they be lying. Oh, I'm so blessed. But when they're at the house, they're going through so many things. Instead of confessing, and God says, confess our sins one to another and say, brother, I'm going through need somebody. I need help to pray. Somebody needs to help me to pray. Come on, somebody. Because I'm going through this battle. And since I'm going through this battle, the Bible says, come before the elders of the church so they can pray for you. If you're going through something tonight, you're in the right place. Come on, somebody. Stop pointing the finger. There's a fear. So because of that, I can stop making excuses for what God wants to do inside of you. God wants to do something powerful. Stop blaming others. Let the Spirit of God show you. See what happens. Watch this. When the presence of God comes, the power comes upon you. The problem in this season that most people, they get a little touch of God and they think they're already spiritual minded. They're already holy. Oh no, you're the one that did it. You're the one that did it. The devil, the Bible teaches me that the devil's been defeated 2,000 years ago. Come on, somebody say he's defeated, he's a liar. Look at the devil say the devil is a liar. So see, God has sent, he sent his son Jesus to forgive you and I of all our sins. He has sent his son Jesus to heal us. Somebody say he's healing me tonight, right now. To cover us. He's covering us tonight to give us our victory in the mighty name of Jesus. So stop making excuses and cough it up and say, God, I messed up last year. I messed up, Lord, and I need you. I need you. Don't be like the, the people that think that they're too spiritually minded. I have overcome the world, God says tonight. So what is the reason why we continue to keep stopping on our way to our promised land what keeps stopping you and I from entering in the promised land amen let's read it again it says pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall amen listen to me church the call of God in the call of God when you're called of God watch this are you ready no one falls because he's weak Can I say that? Paul said this way. Lord, I feel weak. Look at this storm that's on my side. Can you not remove it? He said, Paul, I'm not pulling the thorn out. I'm not pulling it out. Because in your weakness, my grace is sufficient. So that's telling me that we got the victory because we got him to confine him. So don't be excusing. Well, I can't do it, Pastor. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Look at your neighbor and say, you can do it. So Paul says, hallelujah, that God says in his word, my grace is sufficient. It was there for a reason, church. Because in your weakness, church, I will perfect you in your strength. Because church, watch this. When I am weak, thou art strong. Uh huh. You can only and in only Him crucify this flesh. In the source that Jesus Christ has come to deliver us from our weaknesses, to help us in our in our infirmity. Somebody say Amen. When you feel weak, when that's where pride goes. That's where ego goes. That's where I think I need to do this. And I'm going to try this this year. And I'm going to try it my way. God says, hallelujah. That's why I'm letting you go through what you're going through. So you can understand that it doesn't matter what you think or what you think you need to do. It's what my word says to do. And so I can break you and you can come. When the spirit of God comes upon inside of you, it begins to shine a great light. Sooner or later, you start looking at yourself spiritually. God will open your spiritual eyes and he'll begin to show you, look, this is the area where you're failing me. But if your ego's still in the way, you're not going to accept it. This is the area where I need you to stop doing these things. 
these are the people that I'm going to pull away from you this year these are the things that I'm going to do for you if you hearken and you humble yourself you come humbly to my presence I will begin to do something wonderful in your life I will save you not only you and your whole family is what my word says oh you didn't hear me tonight is it the great men of God church in these years and these seasons they, 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 they fall from the grace of God come on somebody some of the greatest preachers they brought the multitudes in people getting saved right and left Pastor Loveless why is it the service the anointed men of God lay hands on people and, and God's power falls on them and they get used by God mighty because then they begin to get comfortable with themselves and they begin to get comfortable that they think they can do it without God mm -hmm. they think they don't need to listen to Pastor Loveless anymore mm -hmm. Pastor Loveless says we need to pray and you say okay I'll pray whenever I got time yeah 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 uh-huh listen church they begin to think that they're strong they begin to think they they have it because that anointing that, that us men of god flows through the church and you begin to feel the strength that we have but you ain't passed the test yet come on you just barely started the call and in the beginning of the call halfway down the line you give up and god disqualifies you because the work that you have this isn't, isn't because of the man of god the work you got and the call that you have it's god's work it's not, it's not, it's not, it's a personal thing between you and God. The man of God is placed here to teach you. Your job is to be obedient and submissive. One of the other tests that God showed us, he, he calls us to be servants. Oh, Rambasa. I'm not even going to hit that one right now. Come on, somebody. Let me just finish and I'm going to finish. Give me five minutes. Hallelujah. They begin to think that they're strong. They don't reach a place of spirituality in their lives that they think the enemy can't come and destroy them. Uh huh. Yes, sir. Uh huh. But say amen. The, te the temptation won't penetrate strong enough so I can fall. Uh huh. No more. I feel I feel so strong that I can I can be in the midst of people that are drinking and partying and ain't nothing gonna affect me. I'm so powerful. Guess what? You said it. It's you and not God. Come on, somebody. The middle of the temptation. Hallelujah. No one can touch me. That's a lie of the devil. Somebody say amen. Church, fall of man. That's when, that's when the enemy, be, that's when you let the door open and the enemy comes right in and begins to sit with you in church. You're listening to the message. You're hearing the word of God. And you're saying, I already knew that. I read that last week. Uh-huh. God isn't playing games with us in this season. you either in or you're out. The scripture says it this way. The one that says, I'm strong, be careful. That he not fall into the temptation. Because when you say, I did this and I did that, hallelujah, you're heading the wrong direction. Somebody say amen. You begin to feel strong. Oh, because I got it. I'm going to do it. No, that's the lie of the devil. The one that is weak and needs strength is the one that God comes and begins to minister to. Somebody say amen. When you need guidance and you need directions and you're humble and you got a contrast spirit and you're willing, hallelujah, he says, I will not despise. There's a story in the Bible that says there was two people. There was a publican and there was a, there was a sinner. One of them said, I brought everything to the Lord. 